Hi, my name is Stephen McGee and I'm the author of Toxic Health. Now, we're here today to talk about harmonics. And to study harmonics, I've built this test rig and I'm going to show you a few things that we can do with this test rig. So, incoming mains cable is here and we have a light switch which switches on these three light bulbs. Now, these are just ordinary 60 watt light bulbs. And on this side, we have three lamp dimmers. And each one of these lamp dimmers controls one of these 60 watt light bulbs. So what we're going to do is we're going to contrast a switched set of light bulbs to a set of light bulbs on a lamp dimmer. And lamp dimmers provide an excellent source of study for harmonics because lamp dimmers actually create really noisy electricity. It's called dirty electricity. And uh, this test rig should let us show what happens when you get dirty electricity on your wiring. Now, we've got two test instruments that we're going to use. The first is going to be an AM radio, and the second is going to be a tri-field meter. This is the 100XE model, and we're going to be using it to read magnetic and electric fields. So we're first going to start with the radio. I'm going to show you what this rig is like before we switch anything on. It's currently plugged in, we just don't have it switched on. So as you can see, it's all very quiet. You know, what we can hear on the radio is static. Um, we're tuned in to AM 530 on the, uh, on the radio. You can be tuned in anywhere on the radio as long as there's no radio station. So I'm going to switch on the lamp dimmer and we can see what happens to the radio. So we're going to start with one. Let's put the second one on. And the third. So we can see we've got about a six foot field of radio waves around the equipment. As we saw, those radio waves actually go down into the home wiring. So our lamp dimmers are off. See how that compared to our light bulbs that are on the switch. Let's switch them on and see what happens. Absolutely nothing. And that's because we don't have any harmonics on this cable. Because our lighting load is resistive. And the only thing going down this cable is the 60 hertz sine wave. So it's not giving off any radio frequencies. But the difference is over here, these switches chop up the electricity using electronics. And that's what causes the radio waves to appear. So let's move on to the tri-field. So we're on magnetic, 0 to 100. Let's see what we find around the cable. So these are, this is the cable for our ordinary light bulbs that are switched. And we can see the field peaks up to about 9 on this cable. And if you switch off the switch, you should see that field go away, which it has. So now, I'm going to measure this cable. 
as you can see we don't have a magnetic field. But let's see what happens when we turn on the first light. So I'm going to tune this as the thing you'll notice with light bulbs is the field varies, the, the brightness. And the peak actually seems to be when the light bulb is actually really dim. So the light's on full right now. I'm dropping it back. The field's coming up. Okay, you can barely see the light bulb right now. So this one is on, the other two are off. So that's our first one. So just one light bulb is generating 10 milligauss. So let's see what happens when we turn on the next one. So right now we're at 35 milligauss. As before it dropped back when it went to bright. I'm just bringing it back to dim. So we can see right now we're just under 100. So I'm going to turn on the third light bulb. So we've got two on right now. Okay, I'm bringing it back down from bright to dim to get the maximum. So you can see we're actually well exceeding 100 right now. That field comes out maybe by about a foot from the cable. So we have a field around the dimmer cable that appears to be over 10 times larger than the switched cable. So there's a significant dif difference in magnetic fields around these cables. So let's see what happens when we go into electric. And again, the fields, the electric fields seem to vary with the brightness of the light bulbs. And it appears to be much higher uh, near the full intensity. So it appears to be the peak. So I'm going to switch off the other two so you can see what they're doing. So with the other two off and one on, we have this field which is indicating a reading of 25 on electric. So I'm going to turn on a second light bulb. So we can see we're over 100 on electric. So let's turn on the third light bulb. So we're pretty much off the scale. So let's see how big this field is. So the field is probably about 10 feet coming out from the equipment. Let's turn off our lamp dimmers. So the field's gone away. Our lights are all off. Let's see what it's like on the switched cable. So we see we can get a field up close to it. And it can be quite large, but 
And you'll notice that that field disappears very quickly. And whereas we had to stand over here earlier to get out of the field, we need to stand about here to get out of the field. So the electric field is much smaller on cables that just have resistive loads as opposed to electronic loads which the lamp dimmer causes. So there you have it. We have a very big difference between the way the circuits perform when they're just switched and when they're on lamp dimmers. And for this reason, I don't actually recommend that people have lamp dimmers in their homes because it will actually make your wiring turn into a radio transmitter and you might get quite sick. And that sickness is called radio wave sickness and electromagnetic hypersensitivity. And this subject was extensively researched and documented by Dr. John Nash Art, and his book, Health and Light, can tell you more on the subject. And he, he wrote and did most of his research in the 1950s. So I hope you enjoy this presentation, and I wish you the very best of health. Thank you.